Hi guys and welcome to today's podcast. We are joined by Ben and Lonya, who are the artistic directors of this incredible establishment, Paradise, by way of Kensal Green. So guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Chaps. We are, uh, obviously, so before we get into it, Ben and I uh, have got quite a tell of history. We used to DJ together, funny enough, about 10 years ago, all across the London scene. I gave it up to pursue a career in dance. Uh, I didn't, <laughs> and uh, Ben carried on and is now found his way to this establishment. So guys, thank you again for, for coming. Do you want to sort of introduce yourselves and sort of explain how we got here today? Lonnie? Why don't you look at me? <laughs> he goes first, because he's like that. Um, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, yeah, my name's Lonyo. Um, some people might know me from the garage music scene. I had a few big garage records back in the day. Big. Massive. How, how big? How big? Massive. Top five? Yeah. Top five records? Yeah. Garage Girls. Give us an intro. Uh, okay. <laughs> not unless there's a brown paper bag. Yeah. <laughs> garage Girls, Summer of Love, Destiny. Yeah. Those were my tracks, so yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So nice, nice. Nice contribution to the garage scene. Yeah. Uh, been DJing for, for 20, over 24 years now and been involved in promoting and, and events for about 20 years. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no hits. No hits under my belt yet. No. Oh, that's why I'm teaming up with this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now I've been DJing for most of my life. Garage, through the garage scene, uh, won a couple of DJ awards um, and then been resident in and out of this venue for the last six years. And then um, me and Lonyo know each other through football, really, and then DJing. And Lonyo's lived in the area for what? Over 10 years now. Over 10 years. So um, when the opportunity came up, uh, the venue was taken over by a different company. And um, so it's not part of the, the chain now, was it? Um, Col Urban? Colombo Group had it. Right. And then um, they sold it to Urban Bars and Pubs. Yep. <clears throat> and Paradise is quite a unique venue. So it's not like a like when you've had the tour now. Yeah. So it's unique. It's not really like a normal pub. No. It's got all different little areas, and it's always had a bit of a hedonistic sort of vibe about it as but well. It's club nights, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, not a lot of pubs have. And it's club and nights. it's niche as well. So you can't just throw any old DJs in here. It needs to be, which we feel like when we realised that um, it had been taken over, they didn't quite get how special this venue was. Yeah. So they had different kind of event, a bit more generic kind of events and DJs, and it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we saw there was an opportunity. Spoke to the guys, and we've been here for what? Got five months now. About five months. Okay. Had a few teething problems at the beginning with you know, various diff different issues, but now. So what's what's your role here then? Um, events, music, creative, social media. Yep. Kind of bringing back the old uh, paradise sort of vibe and atmosphere, mm -hmm. which was fun, all, all different walks of life, but good quality music. Yep. Um, yeah, just really, really. Yeah, just to record. plug in, just to plug in events um, that we feel are, are right for the venue. Because like Ben says, it's very, very niche in the sense of we can't, you can't just throw in, no. you know, an 80s night or a, you know, a hip hop event or a bashment event or a garage. It has to be slightly tailored. Yeah. It has to be slightly tailored, yeah. Do you, do you put the events on yourself or is it getting promoters in with a combination? A combination of both. Yeah. Of both. Mm. yeah, bringing in the right promoters. Yeah. We've both got a lot, a lot of friends who know the area, know us and yeah. Paradise being a special place, everyone's always excited to work here. Yeah. So it's not, it's not difficult to find people who want to work here, but they have to be the right kind of people. Yeah. How do you make that distinction? What do, you, do you have like a, a map and you go right? in this particular genre we want these people who can we work with? Or I think it's it? experience. Mm. Yeah. I think yeah. it's experience, to be honest, because like you say, you DJ for 20 years, mm. DJ music industry for 25, mm. 30 years. Killed me there, 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> He's killed me there. <laughs> <laughs> he, never yeah, no, he started young, yeah. he started young. 20 and I was like, yeah, you went 25, 20, <laughs> 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, if you think of it as a football team and it has a style of play. We're good right. with the football analogy. Yeah, yeah. If you're good, yeah, at, if, if you have a football team and you have a style of play, then you will get the players, hashtag promoters in, that will suit that style. Right. Does that make sense? Or who can play that way or who can produce that way? Yeah. And what is the clientele here then? 
Are you say it's it, the late is not won't work, Bashman won't work. What sort of? Well, well I don't, I don't, what I mean by that is not a, a an eighties only event wouldn't work or a Bashman only event. Okay. Work. I think it's quite a, an eclectic taste because we're we're five minutes from Portobello, five minutes from Kensal Rise, mm. you know, ten minutes from Maidervale. So the music is very eclectic. It's not like we're in a per, certain part of London where it's just mainly garage driven or mainly R and B driven or hip hop or whatever it is. Yeah. I think there's. The, the the people that come to Paradise like an eclectic mix, so they they want to hear that. Yeah. You know, on yeah. on on any given day. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the sort of challenges have you guys faced sort of within the area from <coughs> maybe other clubs or other venues? Do you get any kind of pushback from other people? Or it's a you, unique. Yeah. It's 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 weird because it's one of the only late night venues in the area, so it's a bit, in my opinion, being like a fan and a customer of Paradise before I used to DJ here. Yeah. It was a, uh, it's, it's your only option in West London for a late night music venue, yeah. you know, to hear good DJs and obviously you have a restaurant, a bar, stroke pub and a nightclub. <coughs> There's nowhere else really like that around. No. And not with this kind of style mm. either, yeah. you know, so yeah. it, it is unique, but you are stuck out sort of, not in the middle of nowhere, but it is a destination. It is a bit Yeah, of a so if you come in here, it's not like, if you go on a normal high street strip, there's maybe two or three venues. If, if it's not working at one, you'll go to another. Yeah. Here, it, it, it has to work because if not, then you have to jump in a car and drive maybe 10, 15 minutes to somewhere else. Yeah. So people tend to do, like Ben says, it's a hub where you can have a drink and then party, maybe a, a drink meal mm -hmm. and then party, or you can have your own private, um, this is your birthday or something, I'll show Max, you can have your own birth, private birthday venue and, yeah. and stuff and join the main party. So it's, it's got many different options, whereas most places you're in a club and that's it, or yeah. you're in a restaurant and that's it, or a pub and that's it. Yeah, I guess that makes it harder, the fact that it is a destination venue and you've got to encourage people to, to come here if they're coming from out slightly further away and mm. they've got to come here. But like you guys have seen, <coughs> Paradise is like, it's a bit of a draw in itself as a venue. Yeah. Because now, I'm sure, now you guys have seen it, you're almost like, I wouldn't mind seeing it on a night out, you know? I wouldn't yeah. mind, if, if yeah. there was a, a DJ on, mm -hmm. you'd be like, actually, mm -hmm. dinner, yeah. even if you're with your girlfriend or, or wife, dinner, and then have a dance upstairs or birthdays and stuff like that. Like, it's, there's something about this venue. We, when we were speaking to the management, because obviously we know the place, and we, when we were explaining why we wanted to work here, it's because it has a special feel about it. There's certain clubs, DT, IB for DT10 or Fabric or wherever, they have something special about them. This place has something special about it. Is that yeah. probably the biggest draw then? Is that the biggest selling point? And is it a case of you've got people that will come here because it's a great venue yeah. and the kind of the fact that you're putting on great DJs and, and you've got a good vibe, that's the byproduct, or is it all sort of one encompassing? It's one encompassing. One encompassing, but also if you can marry a great venue, with a great DJ or great yeah. music policy, then you, you, you're in. And uh, I think that's what, like Ben says, it <clears throat> probably 60 60% of the venue, people are like, we love Paradise. But that wouldn't be enough if, if you had a, a good, great venue and the DJs weren't up to par, the music was up to par, you'd be like, you feel slightly let down. It's like, I was really, really looking forward to that night out, but the DJ didn't cut it or the vibe wasn't right. So you, you, if you, you, you get a, a leg up by having a great venue, but you must supplement that with great music it, and great yeah. DJ. It's definitely more music led as opposed to we're just going to go there and see what it is or they will come here because X DJs are not or whatever. I, I think, in my opinion, I think it's a bit of both. It, they, it, they'll know, we, might, we may not be totally sure of who's in at the time, but we know it'll be a good DJ or we yeah. know it'll That's be- That's been our part yeah. of our challenge coming in, isn't it? Because mm. when we came back to the venue, we DJed here before <clears throat> urban bars and pubs took over. And then, you know, you, you weren't hearing great things. You were saying, oh, I know I used to go there, but it's not that great anymore. So a part of a challenge for us coming in has been to get the music consistent again, bring in some friends and DJs and good quality names. What, what is that consistency? Because obviously <coughs> trends come and go in music, mm. um, genres come and go in music, mm. and it seems to be the DJs that were doing it 10 years ago, the good ones are still around. Who are this kind of new breed? What's the kind of new, I think it's experience again. I think yeah. it's knowing what a good DJ is because we can all play, we could all have the same 20 records. Yeah. And half <laughs> of us could play and, and have a really great party and the other ones just, not, there's just something missing. You've got to be able to read people, read yeah. the room. Yeah, I think if you, the experience. days of DJs turning up with a preconceived <laughs> set, tonight I'm going to play X, 
and then they'd look down and then just play. Whether there's 100 people on there or if there was one person on there, they're going to play that set. It's one to 20, this is what I'm going to play. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think you, can, you need to call on that experience and say, well, I'm going to start with this. I've got, a, I've got a, a base I'm going to start with and see where I go. You might turn up and be a hip hop DJ, but then there's a, there's a load of 80s fans. They like a load, load of 80s soul or they might like a bit of 80s cheese or disco or disco house. So what do you what do you then do? Do you carry on playing R and B or do you carry on playing hip hop? No, you have to, you know, go through the back door, play some eighties, go into seventies and disco, and then go that way. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's about taking them on a musical journey and then take them out the other end. You know, there's all these records that have sampled hundreds of disco records. So yeah. then you take them through the eighties into disco and then bring them out the other end, and they'll go, well, I, that resonates with me because that's that's an old disco record. I love that. Yeah. I've never heard this version. And you bring them out on the other end, house, soulful house into garage and you just keep keep trying to take them on that journey mm -hmm. whereas it, because people that come here don't come here tend generally and go i've paid x on my ticket i'm expecting to hear house all night for example yeah they they're don't they're open-minded they're open-minded yeah. yeah they just want to dance with, yeah. with that in mind then because you guys have been in the industry for a very long time um you've obviously seen the kind of trends through how people find the night out to where they go I'm sure you remember the don't stay in dot com days mm -hmm. right yeah. through to when Facebook obviously came in. What do you sort of notice now with the ever changing or ever growing younger population? Do they are they more so ever than uh, music conscious or are they kind of led by social media? Such sheepish social media. I, th I, th I, th mm. I think I think you've got social media, which is just take taken over every business, mm. yeah, pretty much. Like if you haven't got a social media, an active and interesting social media, then you are missing a trick one way or another. Doesn't matter if it's a restaurant, a, the, the lick list, doesn't matter if it's a, a venue like this. It, social media can help any business basically. Yep. And the youth of today, is that making us sound a little bit old, mm. <laughs> but they obviously they have engaged in social media. So I think you've got to tick all the boxes. I think you have to have, um, do you use it a lot for when you're promoting your events here? Is that the biggest way that you're drawing a crowd at the moment? Or? I mean, like I say, you've got to tick all the boxes. Mm, I think yeah. you have to have, you know, this is part of the challenge. You have to have everything in the venue. So if you're, you know, if you're walking around the venue, you see a night on, then you may have, it may tr have triggered something on social media. Oh, I saw that on social media. They've got that DJ. Then you see it again through the newsletter. Mm. Yep. And cards and as so on, on, so. on the exit as people are leaving yeah. cards as a reminder. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's um, many different styles rather than you know the old school days. Give out a flyer mm. or yep. send an, a message on you know Facebook. Oh, it's your birthday, John. Come down with a load of people. We'll give <laughs> you whatever. You can't, you can't discriminate against mm. the youngsters either. No. No, of course. Yeah. yeah. Essentially just just the because they're yeah. here and they want to hear a certain song they've seen on a video yeah. or something like that. But that's part of being a good music person or DJ is that you're you've got an open mm. mind to. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think with um, music. In, on a whole, there's a, there's a lot of uh, information out there. There's mm. tons of information, but I wouldn't say there's as much knowledge. And there's just, that's okay. a slight, it's a slight, it's a slight difference. Okay. It, it, it's might, very important to be aware of everything, but then do you know what, why, and why you like it, and why you, because there are a lot of younger clients that know their music, that do their history, that do their research, and they're into it because they're into the music and they know what they're talking about. And there's others who are led. So, much the same, I guess, was it, it was back in the day, but just not as much information. Because before you'd have to go into a record shop, put the record on, headphones, yeah. physical, oh, I like that, you know, and it would be more personal. Now, I can, I can be at a club, for example, as a young person, be at a club, a DJ player song, I don't have to go nowhere near him, because you'd have, you'd have to go up to him and say, yeah, what's that? sorry, what's that, what's that, what's that? What's that? Shazam, yeah. You just get a Shazam, mm. go That's home, so five minutes, download it, I, it's in your collection, as yeah. the same do, do, do this play. Yeah. I remember. Hearing a track in the club <coughs> and literally putting my phone, putting the what is this, and then the DJ taking my phone <laughs> and then like it's not stealing it, but actually putting information information mm. in the phone and then me going right, cool, let's save that. Mm. Whereas now, as you say, you're now literally. They have to go across the dance Shazam floor. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing yeah. is, though, with Shazam, sometimes it doesn't pick up all those. Or yeah. There are other music apps out there. Yeah. Um, that don't necessarily pick up those particular tracks. Mm. And then you're just burning to kind of. Yeah, you're burning. Out. Do I go? And, yeah. They're going disturbing. Because yeah. It, it, you know, even from an online perspective, I'm sure you grew up in the days of Kazar and Bearish mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. It doesn't seem those platforms are as prevalent as they used to be. No. So it, even though we've got all this technology, 
trying to find new music mm. can be quite difficult in this day and age because mm. you can't really rip stuff off of YouTube because the quality's not there. Mm. Mm. And it can, people aren't as open as sharing as they used to be. Mm. How do you find new music? New music, I mean, I think as a DJ, your ears always... Yeah, you're always you're, attuned to it. You're always attuned. Yeah. If you hear something somewhere and you haven't heard it before, it's like, why haven't I heard that yeah. before? That's got I to also, be. I also think that the, um, the days where you could break a record in the club, um, and I was having this, I don't know if I was having this discussion with, but a lot of records are not mixed for the club. They don't make club records anymore. Okay. In the sense of an artist can produce a record, get it mixed and, and get it played on radio. <coughs> They're making re ra records for radio, yep. as opposed to, a, you know, this needs to really bang in a club. So I think, it, the day I mean, I'm, I remember back in 95, 96, when I first heard a Busta Rhyme record, it wasn't one that was out openly out there, but I just remember sonically it was blew my head away and I wanted to find out about the record. Whereas now, if they don't know it, they may or may not just go, look, just can you just get to what we know? Mm -hmm. You know, it, they That's want it patient. now. Yeah, impatient. They listen, okay, beat's okay, but I don't know the lyrics, I don't yeah. know the words, just get a place, play something we know. Play something I know. Play something yeah. I know. Yeah. Play yeah. some R&B. You know, so it's been it made thousands of comments and we've all had it as DJs, you know, you're playing a record of the genre it is and someone, let's say you're playing, I don't know, Naughty by Nature and someone comes up and says, when are you going to play hip hop? And you're like, yeah. you know, or you're playing Luther Van Joss and someone says, you're going to play any soul or R&B and you're like, yeah, yeah okay. Do you, know, you know. do you know what the worst part is? <laughs> you'll play that, you'll try and, you'll get that record early. What I used to find is you get that record before it got released. <coughs> you used to then drop it in your set and then you would try and test it to see if it would work. And then some people would get it, some people wouldn't. And then you'd get the classic, you'd play something, I know. Six months later, yeah. every DJ's playing that song. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the people who are asking you to play something, I know, Can now I know this track. Yeah. <laughs> like, I told you about this track. Mm, mm. I mean, yeah. this is just That's ridiculous. the, the curse yeah. of a being a DJ. The gift and the curse. Yeah, because you've <laughs> got to play things that you know, but I think as well as a DJ with your music selection, you're trying to show off as much as possible. To For say, sure. I've got this and I've got that. And then maybe your ego gets in the way. Mm. But hey, if it's good music, yeah. It's good music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't, doesn't yeah. make a difference. It's sometimes you have to play records you don't particularly like. There's a lot of records I don't particularly like, but they work. Yeah. And so what do you do then is you have to let your ego go. I wouldn't yeah. play or listen to this myself, but the masses want it and you have to, yeah. you know, ultimately give them that. Yeah. What, um, what, what have you found kind of different over the last sort of maybe 10 years, people's going out habits? Has that changed the you find? From your experience, what, what, what <coughs> going out, there's a lot less clubs, I suppose. Yeah, there's no there's dance floors. Clubs. Dance floors have been replaced by tables, in the sense of the space that they would normally allocate for a dance floor has been made a lot. I, mean, I remember going to West End Club. I won't name what it is, but it was a dance floor, um, and then they had a refurb, and it was just shrunk mm -hmm. and surrounded by tables. There's almost um, there's almost no dance floor, and yeah. so I went there with my with, with a pal of mine. And if you weren't on a table, you felt like a leper because where you used to stand at the bar, essentially, yeah. you couldn't have a dance because the club had been taken over by dance uh, by by tables. Yeah. But what happens if you music? You make just stand this up is my point. You're meant to dance <laughs> at the table. You're meant to I show engage off. With people. Well, not well, yeah. Well, no, really, you couldn't no, they because they want to spend. You look, to yeah. Buy a they table. want people to spend, spend, West. spend. That's what the the number one thing is. You could go out and maybe spend 150 quid on a night out. You've paid to get in and a few drinks, you've had a good night out, yeah. right? Now, or the change I've noticed is you've got to be spending whatever it is to get in and looking at two or three grand, four grand, maybe mm -hmm. to have a decent night. And it's like... Oh, and then there's the flip side to that. So there's <clears throat> some, got some friends of mine who are uh, like a much younger generation. Yeah. They've started throwing parties in the woods in Hackney Wick. They'll, mm. they'll just get, they've got their set up. I've seen videos of them on the boat. They'll set up in the woods or under a bridge. Oh. And it's a, obviously they, they don't get paid. They're not doing mm. it to be paid, but they're building up their reputation as DJs. Mm. Yep. And people are starting to follow them. And then when they do get booked by a club, they've got to follow it because mm. these people have been going to their elite. Mm. Because a lot of, uh, this is on the, a house or more underground circuit. A lot of the clubs will get shut down or, or or kids just can't afford to put on big parties. They can't afford a deposit. They can't afford, you know, this and that. So there there are people throwing parties in the woods and they're going quite well. Like and then mm. they've got a following. 
So it's almost everything goes cycles anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Fashion, music. I was going to say, because people were doing that 30 years Where ago. They're warehouse and they parties, were, yeah. And they were, now they're wearing the same clothes they did 30 mm. years ago. So Everything goes in cycles. Mm. Everything yeah. goes in cycles. Didn't think Illegal Razor would be going in This is what they're doing. Yeah. And they're, they're, good, they're good kids. They don't, they, you know, you know, they may go out and do what they do, what they do, but they just want to listen to music. That's yeah. all they want to do is listen to good music. Yeah. That's all anyone really wants to do. So, yeah, the Mayfair model with the bottles and all this sort of stuff. I thought that died yeah. a little. It did a lot. Of it did. I mean, if it you did. think of the amount of West End venues, which even when we used to work together, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it is diff- mm. it is different now. It's really like, and you can shrunk. imagine with the social media and, and Snapchat, and it's either it's like next level now it's mm. too much yeah, yeah. as you say as DJs though in this day and age how do you build your profile so you've got residency here you've got sort of mm. day-to-day here um but you want to you want to well, secure other just, sort of just like that the, these be- young these young lads that I know they've been that's what they do they they're throwing their own events for free for their friends yeah I think the more authentic you are I don't think you can go wrong with being true to yourself, yourself. yeah that you can't go wrong so mm. if you are if you love music and you want to con- and you want to play music, you'll find a way to play it. You'll find somewhere to play it, and eventually, I think, yeah, you, you'll find your way through if, yeah. if that's what you want mm. to do. You know. It's a lot harder as well. I mean, if I was a, a 17-year-old starting out now, I'd be like, wow, where do I even start? Yeah. At the same time, mm. we didn't have social media. Yeah, yeah. tools yeah. around you. It's tools around you. Now, you can yeah. you can look mm. at that now and say hang on a minute, I don't need to pay for, when we were younger, pay for a website, pay a thousand pounds for a website to put myself out there. Yeah. Yeah. I've got Instagram, YouTube, and, YouTube and yeah. all of this stuff. You've got SoundCloud and things like that? Yeah, I mean, you've got Mixcloud, SoundCloud, mm-hmm. <laughs> YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. But do you yeah. not find that in, in today's market, there are so many DJs. This is it. And yeah. the thing is, it's like, you know, when I used to send out my mixes and do things live in a club, mm. I didn't, you know, auto thing never existed. Yeah. Auto beat, beat, mm. match, and all that stuff. And everything was live. And if you messed up, you messed up. You mm. just trying to spin it back and get it back. And yeah. Whatever. But now, you don't know if someone's sending a mix or they've done a mix and if it's legitimate. Yeah, this but is you it. Can then, you, then, you can tell. But then you, can you tell. invite that person in, okay, cool, play a demo set. I don't know if they're still, they'll play for free mm. for an hour and see what you've got. Yeah, yeah. Is that still popular? That yeah, still? and some, in some Sometimes, quarters, yeah. yeah. In some quarters, yeah. And then all of a sudden, they just absolutely flop. Because yeah. they turn up and it's like, well, it's not the equipment I've used. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't use um, things like SoundCloud. And, I guess I'm in a bit of a unique position because I've been DJing a while. But you, like you said, you had to learn and earn your chops. You know, I, I remember going around my friend's house. I didn't even have decks. I was going around his house and always trying to learn and learn, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, and then you get into a club and it's a different scenario because the music's a lot louder and you can't even hear your mixes. And you've yeah, got yeah. to learn how to DJ in a club, which is different from DJing in your bedroom. So I, I think you're right. You know, ultimately, if I've got two grand, I can go and buy all the record, all the equipment and I'm a DJ without even having to do any chops, any learning of the skill, really just like you say, beat match it, mix, mix, you know, it's very basic, but the DJs who I grew up with, watching them do it live, you know, rocking the crowd, technically ridiculous, you know, and you watch and learn, you just, just watching them for an hour is better than anything I could go and try and learn, do you know what I mean? So, um, And what you can't learn is to read the crowd yeah. that's one yeah. thing that mm. just like, experience right yeah. yeah like any job like meetings if you're presenting to a boardroom you might know what you want to say and you read it and you get in front of the boardroom and you're like oh this is different yeah. yeah but the more you do that the more you read you might need to take a different place the same, same with yeah DJing. the reading yeah. the crowd one is, is is yeah you need that that's that over music you, we, you mm. that, oh, that skill DJs, over music there's been warm-up you come in with warm-up dj and they're trying to rock <laughs> a crowd mm. and that do you know what I mean? This is where experience comes in. Yeah, and, and nine o'clock. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They're, mm. they're trying to rock a crowd, and you're like, no, no, you're not here to do that. Do yeah. You know what I mean, like, so if you're playing a long set, which me and Longo do here frequently, you know that you're the, the crowd may th- the crowd may think they want to dance yet, but you're actually like, actually, we're in control of this room, mm-hmm. and you don't know it yet, but we're just building you up nicely, yeah. getting you guys ready to to yep. kick into gear. So people. You know, you can. It's a psychology thing. Right? Yeah. Well, that being said, I actually like playing warm up sets because I feel you're more free. Yeah. You're not expected to play the big hits. Yeah. You can you can delve a bit. You know. Well, it's like off Paradise piece. here, yeah. isn't it? So, <clears throat> Paradise used to have one one DJ upstairs, um, and now they have two. 
and me and Lonyo almost fight over playing for down, downstairs, which might be the more bar or quiet set because you can play the stuff that you don't get to play when you have right. when you have to make people dance. Yeah, yeah. So you get to play more mm. offbeat. To experiment off script, yeah. yeah, more experimentation, more more music that you're there to to listen to as opposed to make people dance. Yeah. So that's that's got, that's something we're going to start implementing here is is bringing in DJs that aren't really for the mainstream, but to, so to bring that musical kind of crowd back in oh, yeah, yeah. to improve the sound system down here and have them playing, you know, more disco, more house. Yeah. On that note, would you welcome open open nights, open mics? so to speak, for people to try and trial to be your residents? I mean, something we haven't spoken yeah, about, actually. That, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's something we haven't spoken about because um, we've been trying to get other things right, but it's, it's um, you de I mean, it's happened to us, actually, when someone brought us a DJ and we, you know, I said, look, you can jump on the first hour and a half, and he was amazing. It's the guy that um, Silk brought down, he was amazing. So you say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll. it's just like, when, again, when you play football, the manager brings you on for 20 minutes and you yeah. do well, so look, I'll give you a, some more time or a full game next time. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there is a lot to be said for that. But then ultimately you don't want to bring on someone who's, who's not great. And so it's, it's, it's judging it, you know? It's, it's hard to judge because how do I know you're a great DJ and you're not a great DJ, yeah. you're a great DJ or he's not a great DJ. So mm -hmm. again, the only way by doing that is by letting them play, yeah. Mm -hmm. A good option would be if they can come down during the day, if anyone's mm -hmm. down here during the day, yeah. let them literally play to bar staff and you and see how they are. Yeah, yeah. Because what I think a lot of DJs have this this thing is they're going to come in, the room's going to have 300 people and everyone's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. But when you're doing the warm up or something, there could be like four people there yeah. and yeah. you still have to play. Yeah. You still can't mess up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's all a learning experience. Mm. And then as the night builds, more people come in and the more you can start to get into it. Yeah. And that might be a good opportunity if, if any um, you know, budding DJs yeah. ever want that. The, yeah. the, the, the funny thing about that is, um, you, you, as a warm-up DJ, especially here as well, you set the tone for the night. If, you, if, you, if, you're, having a, if you're having a stinker, people are like, listen, okay, let's finish up our drinks and let's see where else, yeah. where there is to go. Yeah. yeah. So, do you, yeah. Um, are you DJing elsewhere at the moment? Are you hosting events elsewhere? Is it all your focus purely paradise? In terms of um, DJing elsewhere, we, we, I mean, we've got, both got agents, so we get booked out for okay. other venues and other events. I'm involved with Garage Brunch, right. um, Hip Hop London, and the usual summer gigs abroad, you know, so it's good to have that, 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 that diversity as well. Yeah. So you don't, you're not playing, so you're not, you've got residency here and you do the events here, but you're also... Yeah, this is, like, this is we just made a conscious decision to make this our only residency. Still take other bookings, but yeah. be associated with Paradise. I mean, we're here with both DJs as well, quite well-known well DJs. We've both got the connection with the venue. Yeah. Mm. From, we were both residents here before. Yeah. So we want to get it back to where we know it needs to be. So has, has the four or five months gone that you've been here? It's been, well, obviously, first first month or so, also working within a bigger structure. So urban bars and pubs have a lot of other venues. So they yeah. have a head office and they've got obviously a- Line management, you know. Yeah, so we, we're used to doing our own events and DJing, you know, so we're used to just get, getting involved and saying, right, bang, this is what we're doing. This is how much yeah. we're spending. But now it, it has to go up the chain and we have to get things agreed and we're like, come on you know we're, we're ready to rock and roll yeah. kind of thing so but so we understand we understand that because otherwise you don't get you don't want to get rogue no rogue, exactly rogue artistic direction no, yeah we'll, yeah, be, we'll so, be throwing yeah. pro money <laughs> yeah think, come on everyone yeah but so no, but yeah. that's been yeah. interesting that's been yeah. interesting working in that mm -hmm. kind of. I was going to say what's that like then going from essentially no structure to there is a structure and there is a hierarchy how's that been for you guys on a, on a personal level for me it was, it was hard in, in initially because i i'm very much a spontaneous that DJ is available. Let's book him, mm -hmm. and then but then you worry about everything else and uh, on the back end. However, look, looking how I've been working here now, and you always think, especially if I've, I've been in it quite a few years, that no, the way I've been working is the best way. But no, that's just the way you've been working. It doesn't mean it's the best way. So taking on board some of their uh, procedures has been beneficial because it allows us to do a vast amount of work. But once that work's done, you're just you're just topping it up. You're ahead of time. You're ahead, you're rather time. than just working hard on each venue, you, on a, each event, you, you, you do the bulk of your work in the beginning to drive it, and then you're just touching it up, which I think, and I think is a bad way. The venue have also enjoyed our energy, our slightly chaotic DJ energy, mm. you know, creative yeah. energy coming in and saying, you know, we're, we're throwing ideas and they're like, okay, let's, let's now structure that. Yeah. Yeah. Marginalise and structure. Let's it, now yes. price it up, let's now get it in order, get mm. it in place, and. I think now, 
I think we're getting to the stage where we're, mm. we both, us and the company, are starting to understand each other. Yeah, how, how far in advance are you now then? So what events are you to planning the for? To the end of the year. To the end of the year. Which, if you told me when, when, like, when, we, when we came in that that's what we'd be doing, I'd be like, no, that doesn't work like that. We, we yeah. do it month to month. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. no, this way is a lot better, you know. Yeah. Um, we, cause we, we're, we're now looking at January, January February, Feb February mm. right. where the people we were going to, you know, the events we were going to have in, we've now realised, hang on a minute, that's, that's too soon now. Let's, yeah. let's, let's get this year out of the way, put them on next year. Yeah. So yeah, it's been interesting. One question there? specific to here, how does the transition work from restaurant to club? Do you, is it, is it, do people go from the restaurant to the club? Or I, think, I think it's down to the customer, to be honest. Yeah. Some people will just come just for food and <clears throat> you've got the benefit of having you know, a bar here after to have a drink or something like that. Actually, yeah. there's quite a big refurbishment happening mm. downstairs where they're going to change the bar in the restaurant area slightly so that it encourages people to stay after dinner mm -hmm. and for late night drinks. So it's going to become more of a cocktail bar. Yeah. Um, but then, again, because it's got such a good reputation, it's been here for quite a long time now, people know that there is that option. Yeah. Or if you're having, if you're... Okay. If you just want a club, then you'll get here a bit later. You know, you, yeah. the, re the restaurant service last orders is at half ten, so people come and dine, and if they want to stay, they'll stay, and if they don't, they'll go. But then the people that just want a club will turn up around ten o'clock, half yeah. nine, ten. What was the kind of the need for say, for getting you guys in? Because obviously, if it's been here for a long time, and you said earlier it was about kind of bringing it back to where it was. Yeah. Did Paradise kind of say, ah, I think we've lost our way a bit. Who can we rely on? Or would you guys actively campaign in? Little by every we did this. We, 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 like I say, we were residents here, and then when things changed, obviously management changes, and they might have their own ideas of DJs they want to pull in, whether it's down to budget or whether it's down to person, who, they know, who yeah. they know or whatever. But one thing you know, especially Lonyo living literally just down the road, and me knowing a lot of people who come here, is that you start to pick up a bit of an energy of people who maybe don't go there as much, right. uh, or you're not seeing the social media activity or you're not seeing the DJs that used to play here or stuff, something like that. And then because we both come here, like I say, Lonya's a, a local resident and I come here, I think it was for just a roast one day. And um, I don't know, we picked up from, from staff and people we know that things weren't going too well. It's a venue that we've mm. both always been interested in. So we kind of reached out and said, look, maybe we can have a chat about getting involved and, and helping out a little bit more. And it just kind of went mm. on from there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, the restaurant side was was kind of steady and doing it was fine. Wasn't it? it was more <laughs> along the event, on the event side, and um, I suppose that's quite a hard challenge because not a lot of venues get that right, do they? Food and late night. Yeah, in it's one not venue. easy. It's um, not easy at all. No, it's not easy. I no, it's a challenge. It's definitely yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, and we came we came in at quite a difficult time of year for this. Just venue, beginning the summer. Yeah, oh. summer, summer. Everyone's away. Yeah. In a yeah. venue where if you haven't got a terrace or a garden or something like that. Yeah. Because it's quite a gothic feel to this venue as well. I think it encourages nightlife. It, yeah. was, it was created with a nightlife in mind. Yeah. You know? It's the so best with so many festivals as well, especially yeah. in London. And Every yeah. other weekend it's like... Summer's a, summer's yeah. a killer, I think, yeah. in most industries. Yeah. Mm. You did say at the start about the kind of carnival weekend. That mm. was obviously in August. You said mm -hmm. it was packed to the rafters. Carnival, the carnival here is mm. an institution. Like right. it gets turned into just a huge clubbing experience. Yeah, two floors. You know, the, the furniture all gets cleared out. Yeah. The big DJs get booked. The big brands come in and want to work. With we've the had venue. Red Bull. We've had uh, So Fresh, So Clean, Rinse FM. So some good, yeah, you know, wow. good partners. Yeah. Boiler yeah. Room have been here. Deviation have been here. Um, and Carnival is there. Yeah. Carnival is three hundred <laughs> jars that way. <laughs> so mm. yeah, that's always been. Yeah. You were saying as well that where the kind of verse how it's such a versatile um, venue you're then looking at doing different things in different rooms and obviously when we went upstairs you got the conservatory mm -hmm. and you're thinking about doing something there so mm -hmm. have management just gone this and basically just said to you look there's your slate let us know what you want to do price it price, price it, it yeah. organize it yeah organize it <laughs> we think it's viable then mm -hmm. we'll give you absolutely yeah percent yeah that's how it works. Pretty much, yeah. They've been very supportive. New management as well, because we've just recently taken over yeah. by a new GM. Been uber supportive and very encouraging and right. adding to those yeah. ideas. And, and like, when you have that, it makes such a difference. Yeah. Um, because sometimes you feel like no one can read, not, not reading off the same page. Whereas 
when you do find that connection with a, with a, with a, a manager or something who does encourage you to do that, you know, like football, encourage you to play, encourage you to express yourself, and they'll support you, rein you in on numbers, <laughs> not on numbers or, yeah. or other things, or remind you of deadlines. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Do you work with any other venues in the chain? Not at the moment. No. Not at the moment. It's no. quite different. You, you, you yeah. Know, We're you still trying to look after our own thing. house. Yeah. 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 But mm. no, I, I think um, this is unique. This yeah. is a unique space. Mm. So. So I'm trying to think a venue similar to this, that in terms of the what you offer and yeah. the the decor and. Um, King, King, right. Is there a place in King's Cross? There's a few places, obviously yeah, with the with the previous group as well. They've got a few other setups that are similar to this, mm. but even when we used to work for them, this was always different. Yeah. Because the areas changed so much over the mm. years. Lonyo mm. will know. There's an amazing, you know, with lots of parts of London with certain gentrification, some people can see as a bad thing, but I think it's interesting because you get all different types of people around here. The area is so lovely, but mm -hmm. that you still got a lot of character. Yeah. You know, mm. so you get a, a blend of people, and this place kind of lends itself to, to that. Is it still NW or is it W? NW10. NW10. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, it's W10. It's W10. Do you get people from outside of London traveling in for the big events? You, you used to get that more. Mm. You used to, and this is something, again, that I think with consistency and booking great DJs, and once people realize, what, and, and again, social media, reaching out to surrounding counties Essex or Surrey or Kent and stuff like that people used to travel in yeah a lot more um, but that's something we'll definitely I think I think with Get the to. type of artists we're booking and the ideas we have that will start to happen yeah. and social media reaching out to those people what's, what's the future of the industry in your opinion the industry the clubbing industry yeah what is the future of the clubbing industry? Probably sitting at home with goggles on, not going out. And, mm. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not wasting yeah. aftershave, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not wasting aftershave, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, discussed, I've discussed virtual reality clubbing with Mixmag before. Right. And um, I had a couple of big meetings with them about, they actually create, no, sorry, it was a friend of mine. We'll probably talk about this actually. Mm. She has a, a virtual production house so you could watch the take of that concert. You know, you could pick your seat. You could download that. And, you know, this is what the, this is what the future mm. is going to be. Yeah, that is what the future is going to be. And whether the kids will slowly realise it's not as good as going out and dancing, mm -hmm. uh, or not, or maybe we'll realise actually, mm. you know, <laughs> it's just as good. Yeah, and that's what the future is. I think. As we start to wrap up, both I want two separate answers on this. Learning your first, what keeps you in this industry? Um. I would say my love of music. I know it's a very romantic answer. Um, and there, and there's, there's nothing like playing a record and seeing someone's reaction to it. There's, there's nothing like it. It's like scoring a goal, you know? Because they're enjoying, you're, you're sharing, I don't know who you are, sir or ma madam. You don't know who I am, but we're, but we're both enjoying this, we're, yeah. through the rec for this record, we're both enjoying this moment. We're both enjoying the bass line, we're both enjoying the, the melody, the whatever it is, we're just we're just enjoying something, even though we've got no personal connection apart from music. from music. Uh, do you know what? Go on, then echo. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I think if you've like we've both been in the industry for so many years, we could have gone so many different directions. Yeah. Just pulls you back in. I can't help but feel a certain like me, me and Lonya are on the phone every day. Mm. Where it's not talking about the venue. It's talking about music mm. in some one way, shape, or form. Yep. It's talking about music, and we just both got the same energy for it. And I think, well, you're not. You, I'm sure, even though you're working with, with Lickless, you just, if you've got, a, and I think everyone's got a passion for music. Everyone. Mm. It doesn't matter if. Don't what genre it is. It doesn't yeah. matter who yeah. you are, where you come from. It doesn't matter anywhere in the world. You could be anywhere. It, it's you've got a still. Music will mm. play, people will dance. Yeah. It doesn't so, matter where you are. And it's certainly something universal. As you say, you go to a festival in the middle of any country in the world and there'll, be, there'll be a song that will play and it will unite thousands of people mm. and you'll all have that same quest to kind of just It's everywhere. Be in mm. zone and I remember it. watching the, um, the Human Planet, it was called, <clears throat> and it was in the middle of the, the Amazon. There's no speakers, there's no electricity. They had three kids, uh, a wet cloth stretched, stretched across a lake creating a, a drum beat off of that and then yeah. people started dancing around that. So that doesn't come from, that's something that is in everybody. Yeah. 
everybody loves music. Babies love music. Mm. As soon as you put a tune on, babies mm. start dancing. Yeah. No one's taught them that. Mm. That's in everybody. Yeah. That's what it's about. Well, I don't think we're going to talk that as we continue. So, <laughs> guys, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you for coming down. Thank you, man. Nice. Uh, yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank you.